be it the preliminary examination syllabus or the mains examination syllabus i personally found the mains examination syllabus to the to be the best guide for me in terms of how to attempt the questions how to prepare my notes how to understand the subject so make sure that you know exactly what the syllabus is for gs1 2 3 and 4 in terms of, of the mains examination when you're going through any other material for example any current affairs magazine or the newspaper or any other ncrt make sure that you have the syllabus in mind and through that lens you're looking at whatever material is being provided to you that will be a guide as to what to read and what not to read because this is one question which lots of people ask me what do we study how do we know what is important how do we know what is not important i feel knowing the syllabus can be the first and most important guide in knowing what to study and what not to study right so firstly know what the syllabus is based on the syllabus uh whatever books that you decide to follow uh whatever basic books that you decide get, get to know the concepts behind all of that so for example parliament is something that you're studying get to know the working of the parliament how it is function of how how it's functioning for for, uh, for example from the point of view of prelims know the composition of the parliament from the point of view of the mains get to know uh, in terms of the data in terms of the women representation in the parliament the lower caste representation in the parliament get to know when you're reading a concept get to know the wholesome um uh, you know understanding of that concept if you're say talking about geography um how a certain you know weather phenomena comes into place the consequences of that weather phenomena in terms of examples where all that weather phenomena has happened in the recent time period the disasters related to that so get to know the basics only then go on to the next part reading books is should not be your main aim after you get to know the syllabus whether it's science whether it's history get to know the basic concepts understand it if you can't understand it from one book go and uh, look at any for example youtube video if you can find go and ask a teacher but make sure that you understand something because merely rote learning is not going to get you um, anywhere right so if you're gaining knowledge make sure to understand the how why what when and then go forward so get to know the basics the basics can be provided to you by any basic ncrts or any other basic books you're following for each subject uh, be it polity be it geography and once you get to know the basics uh, so here again another challenge comes up because some people really for example like to read history and they really get into the depth so based on the second part which i'm talking about they really get into the depth about say um, you know any event which has happened so you will look at some 10 different videos based on that because you really want to get to know about it but then you forget that you have to cover the entire syllabus so make sure there's a balance between both you're also understanding what you're reading you're having a certain amount of interest in it you're understanding the uh, the implications and the other examples of that point but at the same time you're also understanding that you're not you know completing a phd on that subject you have to appear for this examination so knowledge should definitely not be instrumental only for the, for this examination but your goal in mind in terms of you know attempting the civil services examination should also be kept in mind because say for the four gs papers there are 10 different subjects to cover apart from that you have optional also you have your essay also so make sure that your time management is such that although you're going through the basic books you're understanding concepts but you're dividing time as such so that all your subjects are being covered because merely gain, gaining a lot of knowledge in one subject and completely neglecting the other subject is not going to get you anywhere in terms of this examination right so make sure that you know the syllabus you get your basics right so you're following your basic books and thirdly you're covering the entire syllabus you're dividing your time in such a way that no subject is being neglected um so once you decide that this is uh, in terms of a continuation of what i was earlier talking about once you've decided that you're giving this examination you've sort of gotten your uh, basic material ready you need to understand the subject content and what all you need your divide uh, uh, you need to divide your time for so you're creating certain targets say for the month for the week for the entire year so right now if you have decided if i'm get, giving the next attempt i'm giving my examination in 2023 or if i'm giving a, a, my examination in 2024 make sure that you know what all you have to cover right so uh, sometimes what people do is you know they uh, you know in the in they have a lot of excitement initially when the results have come you know i'm going to crack this examination the next time i go to the market i pick up the nearest books that are close to me or whatever i've read on uh, the internet and i just start reading it with full gusto full this thing and that slowly dies down by the second month make sure that you have a plan in terms of how you're going to chart out your preparation for the entire year roughly even if not to the 
T, but roughly in terms of what you have to do in the next uh, coming, say, one year or two years as to how to divide your preparation. So there are certain divisions in which you can make. Firstly, there are certain subjects in general studies which will be helpful for both mains and prelims. So this involves, say, uh, polity, geography, history, economics, environment, science and technology. These are subjects which will help you in both um, prelims and mains. At the same time, there are certain subjects which will only be helpful for me. So something like ethics, which is part of GS4, disaster management, internal security, governance, social issues. Apart from that, there is optional, which will only help you in the mains roughly. Although, say, for example, history was my option or sociology. Sometimes that, you know, uh, knowledge does help you in the prelims as well. But sometimes, for example, if you have agriculture as your option or Telugu literature as your option, it won't help you. So dividing your time in terms of that. Apart from that, when you have done your basic content study, uske baad there is answer writing. There is answer writing for mains and there is mock tests for prelims. So once your base is ready, then you start your answer writing. So these are certain things that you have to do uh, at least. These are things you have to do at least before you give your next attempt. That you know, when you start out, uh, there are certain basic subjects that you are covering. You are starting with polity, which will provide a base for your uh, general studies paper too. And will also help you in, say, parts of ethics, governance, sometimes in your uh, essay paper as well. So make sure that you cover polity, you cover history, you cover geography, you cover economics. These are key subjects that you have to, I personally feel, start out with also because they'll prepare the base for your entire preparation. Once all of these major subjects are um, done, uh, including environment from whatever one or two books that you're relying on. Um, after that, I think towards, uh, say, five months before prelims, when you've not started your prelims preparation, but after you have sort of done one or two basic readings of your complete subject, then you, I think, also can move towards subject like ethics, disaster management, internal security, governance and social issues, which I personally call low hanging fruits. because in terms of the mains examination, because these are subjects that you can prepare really well. There are two or four, two, three questions, say, on internal security, which definitely come year after year. If you have good notes prepared on them, if you have good material prepared on them, then a little amount of study can fetch you those good marks in those four questions. So identify those areas. Similarly, ethics, there's an entire paper on ethics, GS4. So uh, spend some time on that. These are certain... Um, Papers that will not help you in prelims. Yeah, these are not sub subjects which help you in prelims. But if you have good content prepared on them before you give your prelims examination, you don't have enough time in, say, the two and three months immediately after your prelims examination to work on these subjects. So make sure that you work on these subjects before you give your prelims in the first attempt as well, right? So this is something that you can do. Apart from that, uh, you can divide your time in the day, uh, say, between um, GS and optional early on. Some people, uh, you know, start with the optional and then sort of uh, a few weeks they give optional, then they complete certain subjects, then move to GS. So in terms of your time division, that is something that you can decide yourself. But uh, make sure that you're spending certain time on optional as well. <coughs> One thing I would suggest you to do is not leave mains preparation for after prelims because people get stuck in the cycle of giving prelims year after year after year. So make sure that your mains preparation is done to a certain extent, at least 60%, 70% before you give your first examination, right? Um, once that is done, then spend some time, um, uh, say three to four months before your prelims start with starting with answer writing. At the same time, make sure that, you know, you're also giving certain mock tests uh, throughout or especially towards the last three months before the prelims examination. That is the time I think you should increase your um, uh, attempting of prelims mock tests or say uh, attempting previous year question papers because that is the time your mind is sort of uh, going through that objective sort of data specially geared towards the prelims. So this is in terms of your overall targeting and scheduling of the uh, entire year's preparation, especially in terms of um, say the requirement of this examination, if I have to like sort of sum it up, if I'm asked to sum it up in a few words, first is subject understanding. So conceptual understanding of whatever subject is very important, both in prelims and mains and interview, unless and until you understand it, the application based questions that are recently coming in, especially the last three or four years, you won't be able to handle, be it in prelims, be it in mains, merely rote understanding will not help you. First is subject understanding. Second, analytical skill in interlinking because even if a certain concept is given in the syllabus a certain question is asked that verbatim question will not be asked uh, 
to you in the prelims examination. There'll be six, seven different options, different application-based options. So unless and until you link two or three subjects, it won't, you won't be able to answer them. If you're, say, reading about uh, certain science and technology innovation in a page on the Hindu on the science and technology page, if it's related to agriculture, make sure that you're also using it in your GS3 paper in, say, uh, an agriculture question. Or, for example, a disaster management um if, if a question on water crisis is coming there, if you're using it in environment and it's related to, say, the Mihir Shah Committee on Water Crisis, use it in a disaster management question as well. So constant interlinking, constant analytical skills, I think, is required in this examination. Apart from that, apart from the subject understanding and interlinkage, time management is very important because even though you have the correct amount of knowledge, you have the correct strategy, if you're not dividing your time well, nothing can be done. And again, more, more, most importantly is the management of stress because this constant ups and downs, questioning, lack of motivation will constantly plague you throughout the, throughout this preparation. And it doesn't matter who you are. For example, right now I am, uh, supposedly the topper of this examination. I went through exactly the same, uh, thing as most of you are going through immediately, say, um, three to four days before uh, the results were coming in, I was going through, ex like, I was extremely anxious as to how the results are going to be. I had no clue that I'll get such such a good rank. So whoever they are, whatever stage they are at this examination, will be going through a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, a lot of questioning that you will be going through. But make sure that you're giving your 100%. You're also doing something to balance that stress. So whatever works for you, be it meditation, be it sort of, I used to take really long walks when I was feeling really stressed, uh, you know, spending some time with your parents, with your friends, a positive environment. Make sure you have certain things around you or certain things that you do to manage that stress. Okay, so this is in terms of this entire preparation. Now we'll go to specific parts of this preparation. So first is prelims. What did I do before my prelims examination? I personally was not a person who was very, very, you know, confident about my prelims. Both prelims that I gave, I was, I found it to be the most challenging phase of this examination in terms of prelims, means and interview. I was really um, sort of skeptical even after I had given my prelims. But I think what worked for me overall was firstly keeping my materials limited. So I had one book uh, for, say, economy or one note that I followed for economy. I had one book, say, Lakshmi Kant for polity. I followed that for polity. So one basic book I kept uh, for most of my subjects. I had limited materials for subjects that I did not have a book for. I prepared very limited notes, which I used to revise. Secondly, um, current affairs, you can't neglect current affairs. For that also, I kept my sources very limited. I had one uh, specific thing which I used, whether it was yearly compilation or it was my own notes. I had one thing. I constantly related, say, whatever I was reading in the static part with my current affairs. If, I, if there was something that I found, I was read in the newspaper, right? So if I was not finding it anywhere else, I used to Google search it, you know, find, say, when did this, for example, this event is mentioned, when did it happen, who was the first person associated with it, or some uh, technology related thing is there what are the implications for it or say the s400 missile uh, is something that i read in the news who um, who has created this who is buying it what it is being used for so these things i used to google search sometimes if i did not find in anything so make sure that you're interrelating your current affairs with your static material constantly asking questions right and thirdly is multiple revisions one time reading a book is going to get you nowhere because i think i personally when i read the first all my books for the first time, the next time I picked it up, it was almost as if I had not gone through those books at all. So merely reading one book once and reading 10 books is not going to help you. One thing that lots of people say, you know, ki, you know, I don't have any problem reading. I find it really interesting reading something. But going back to the same thing is the biggest challenge for me. So I agree with you. Uh, revision can sometimes be a really like big burden. Getting Going back to the same thing uh, may get a little boring, but make sure that you do that because otherwise the effort that you're putting in the first time is also not going to bear uh, fruit for you. So make sure you have some sort of external accountability person if you can't do it yourself. Sometimes I used to make groups of two, three people. We used to set targets in terms of kya charge, part three khatam karna hai, polity ka ye, this, that. And we used to, by the end of the day, we used to ask each other, have you done that? Or you used to sub sometimes sit together and study. If you don't have those sort of people around you who are preparing for this examination, ask your mother, ask some other friend of yours to, you know, keep a check on you in terms of this is something that I want to do today. Tell them in the morning and have some sort of tiny reward for you or tiny punishment for you if you're not doing that. So create certain things which will help you revise, keep 
keep to that revision schedule because revision is very very important for any stage of this of this examination especially for prelims right so this is in terms of the basic strategy making a revision schedule i made a revision schedule for the last 3 4 months because that is the time you very very uh, like you know a stream in a very streamlined way you study for prelims specifically so i used to make sure that i used to do at least two and at least three revisions uh, and the nature of the revision can uh, differ because first time you're reading the entire book second time you're sort of reading only the underlined bits third time when you're revising you you know jumping you you so there's this term in say polity you read in terms of kangaroo clause so it's literally a kangaroo clause where only jumping to the important parts of the book which you think will help you even in the current affairs so make a revision schedule for the last 3 or 4 months that personally helped me sticking to one source whatever basic book that worked for you thirdly and very very importantly something that i haven't talked about yet apart from the syllabus for the prelims something that helped me was the previous year question papers use your pre previous year question papers as a guide um i say for example um looked at previous 10 10 to 15 years papers theme wise uh, say for example if i'm doing history so i read my basic book whatever i had and then um, i used to go to the previous year question papers based on modern history and go through those questions look at it look at the other options sometimes or something that i don't know about there's a question which is completely different i used to just google search it or find uh, that concept in a specific book and try to read more about it so that sometimes helps a uh, one example that i give is for example uh, a mongo a question on mongols which came um uh in the previous year paper say 2020 paper and lots of people could not attempt that question so for example if you're going through that a uh, previous year question paper if you just go home and look for say when did the mongols come to india how many times did they come who was the ruler there so at that time you do that even if you didn't answer that question that time in 2021 another question on mongols came so the the topic was the same there were slight you know differences in how the question was framed and obviously the question was also slightly different but if someone had gone back and analyzed that previous year question paper he or she would have been able to answer that question this year similarly for polity certain questions on say you know uh, the right to privacy which which fundamental right uh, it is they have uh, these questions have been repeat, repeated verbatim like uh, in two years or three years so make sure that you use your previous year question papers as a guide in terms of the language of questions how options are framed in terms of subject content so this thing uh, definitely helped me especially i think for history certain sections say buddhism jainism i prepared separate notes for that so use previous year question papers if there are certain sections which you know there are like loopholes or lapses in your uh, preparation make sure that you prepare notes Uh, of those specific sections one page or two page notes which you find in the previous year question papers but not anywhere else so that was really helpful for me so that is something that i personally suggest you can do and you should do and some other people who score really good marks in prelims have also advised me to do thirdly is mock tests so if for example if you complete a certain uh, subject you can go back and prepare uh, and you know attempt a sectional test of that specific subject it will really help you for revision and also uh, you know evaluating yourself because sometimes you read something but it's not really you know imbibed by you so you can attempt mock tests of that particular sectional secondly it also helps you in figuring out how many you to, to attempt i personally feel not not in terms of say sectional paper but towards the end those uh complete mock tests come including all papers that so if it, if you attempt say uh, 20 papers of that sort um you get to know how many sort of questions you're comfortable attempting some people uh, attempt only 80 questions in the final paper i personally was not very sure about my accuracy accuracy so i attempted close to 95 questions in my final paper both times so what works for you also sometimes you get to know in terms of those middle wala question we don't know if you're attempting right or not but that nature of questions where you've you know made a tukka at the end when you're, when you're analyzing those questions try to see how many of those tukkas were right and how many of those tukkas were wrong so over a period of time over say 10 or 15 papers that you attempt you get to know if your tukkebazi is something which is working or not right so that is something that you can analyze based on both these mock tests as well as attempting of previous year question papers so at the end say one week before the final examination the last three or four years question papers previous year question papers try to attempt in those two hours and see how many of you um, are getting how many right 
right another thing that i tried to do uh, towards the end was making a small prelims booklet so that was just one booklet that i had for very quick revision so for example if there's some mock test that i attempted and there were some questions that i did wrong or there are certain questions which i'm doing repeatedly wrong something which i can't remember at all in any specific book so i used to have two two pages say for one subject so polity uh, similarly uh, geography or so some map work based questions i used to just write down in one line whatever was wrong and towards the end i used to just flip through that tiny booklet for other things that you know i had missed out so that i am i personally did you can do if uh, it works out for you that was something you know i felt the need for and therefore i made on my own so whatever strategy i think works for you you should go for that and you'll get get to know like make sure that you're self analyzing at regular intervals in terms of what you're doing is actually working or not so this worked for me um so this was roughly my strategy for prelims then for mains examination right so mains examination again the syllabus use the syllabus as your guide very very diligently and say for social issues uh, in paper 1 there are clear cut uh, terms which are mentioned say urbanization population women's issues and more or less questions are asked from those same areas uh, year after year similarly say uh, internal security there are clear cut you know guides uh, for science and technology nanotechnology artificial intelligence it's clearly mentioned rather than just you know picking up a science and technology book and reading it cover to cover it's helpful if you have one or two pages of notes or just underlined stuff even if you're reading from a book uh, according to the syllabus so keep the syllabus as your guide that is something that i uh, did for uh, for areas that i did not have notes for i may Read notes for whether it through uh, be it through online sources or any other material. Uh, similarly, previous year question papers. Sometimes, um, say for GS three, uh, if you go through certain economy questions of the previous five to six years, you sometimes realize that you know sometimes questions are not asked clearly uh, from the static portions, but they're. Uh, but they're very you know current affairs based questions in economy say so in that area you will not uh, put a lot of emphasis on the static notes that you prepare from the syllabus but see economy things that have happened in the past uh, you know two years based on current affairs so analyzing previous year question papers in terms of what sort of questions are asked from each section of the paper is also something that is very important similarly for ethics uh, you know the nature of questions uh, sometimes you get to know case studies if you answer from previous year question papers you get to know in terms of how to structure the uh, answers so previous year question papers and syllabus i would strongly strongly recommend for anyone who wants to like fetch slightly more marks in the mains examination they should definitely not neglect secondly is note making this again it depends from person to person i personally made notes there are some people who are not very comfortable making notes but i personally found note making to be helpful for me uh, for a uh, sticking to the syllabus and not reading un any unnecessary stuff and secondly also for uh, quick revisions say for my optional um, studies uh, history is a very very vast optional so i made notes based on the books that i was reading and towards the end i did not go back to any of the books i only used my notes for it so it depends from person to person and whatever subject that that you're studying but i personally found note making to be very very helpful for me in uh, you know consolidating my material and quick revision thirdly is in depth understanding of current affairs the current affairs that some people you know uh, go through for prelims the way that they uh, go through current affairs for prelims is slightly different from the way that you go through it for your mains and your uh, prelim and your uh, personality test parts because just rote memorizing as to how and what organization you know comes out with a particular index or comes out with a particular report is not important is not important enough you also need to know why certain current affairs is happening the history of that thing so for example if something has happened in international affairs a pact has been signed between india and japan or a pact has been signed between india and china you need to know the history of india china relations you need to know the causes of the current relations you need to know the consequences of the current in fact you also uh, have to suggest certain way forward in terms of how that relationship should go forward so a more in depth und understanding of current affairs is important so that you can work on be it through um, say certain current affairs magazines if you are following or um, if certain issue if you want to go in depth going through a youtube video of that particular thing so that is something that you have to work out yourself or reading the newspaper so i personally use the newspaper as a guide for uh, especially for my current affairs journey for my mains examination the articles in the newspaper or certain parts other parts um going in depth thirdly is consolidated material this will be a combination of whatever i have talked about earlier based on the syllabus based on previous question papers note making make certain consolidated material 
and again um i can't stress this enough answer writing you may know everything uh, there is to know about a subject you may talk about it for hours on end but when it comes to finishing uh, or consolidating and writing all of that material within 7 minutes it may be very very challenging for you especially if you're doing it for the first time immediately before your mains examination so make sure you're practicing answer writing and there are certain improvements that you will need to do along the way no one will write a perfect answer the first time they write an answer so make sure